I know that you've wondered how much you will feel when you die. We all have. Death is one of the most commonly shared fears. What if I told you that we have come to understand enough about how the body behaves in death to form a strong hypothesis? My content may be upsetting to some. Viewer discretion advised. Every single death is unique, of course. There are over 26,000 known diseases, over 6 million traumatic deaths annually, around 400,000 due to malpractice, plus so much more. Each comes with their own sensations, or lack thereof. Some traumatic deaths occur so immediately that there's no time to process any pain, leaving it a pain-free death. But for those that aren't, and those that do not cause immediate damage to the brain, there is a distinctive active dying process. Many things will begin happening that can sound highly uncomfortable or downright painful, but are they? Some people experience the full process in under a minute, and for others, it can extend up to 48 hours. Your blood circulation will slow, which means vital organs will be prioritized. Your limbs will grow cooler as they begin to lose their oxygen source and may even change in color. Even as priority, your organs will not receive enough to fully function, beginning either a lagging or swift shutdown. Your pulse will weaken, and your respirations will slow and grow erratic. This can mean periods of hard, noisy breaths, followed by long periods of not breathing at all. The noise can come from an accumulation of saliva in the throat, resulting in a rattle much like this. With everything slowing down, you can experience a decline in mental function. Occasionally, it can lead to extreme restlessness and agitation, and other times it can lead to loss of awareness or consciousness with much in between. Your nervous system will be affected greatly early on, which you might find to be good news. With the decline in circulation also leading to a decline in oxygen, it will simply stop working appropriately. Though in occasional cases there might be a temporary increase in sensation, in most, there is a sharp decrease. So much so that many people stop responding to stimuli completely, Studies that have analyzed brainwaves in dying patients tend to show evidence of things like memory recall or an altered mental state. They do not tend to mirror those in patients experiencing severe bursts of pain. This does not entirely rule out the presence of severe pain, but it is compelling circumstantial evidence. I have been asked more times than I can count if there are any truly pain-free deaths. Many people don't like my answer. Not because there aren't any, but because majority of them are considered very messy and grotesque. There are deaths that are generally considered peaceful, like passing due to diseases brought on by old age, but aging in general is painful. All of us that make it there will undergo physical changes that will lead to some kind of chronic pain. We will experience muscle loss and our bone density will decline. Our cartilage will degrade and thin, leading to stiffness. All of the injuries that we have endured over our lifetime will aid in these processes. There are plenty of preventative measures that we can take to soften the blow, and modern medicine can help greatly for our comfort levels, but this excludes this death as being truly pain-free. The deaths that do not induce physical discomfort are the deaths that happen near instantly. This means that death occurs within just a few tiny milliseconds. Humans are, by nature, very durable. Our most vital organs are protected by an armor of bone and supportive connective tissue that can withstand a lot of shock absorption. Some even have a nice protective capsule. Our skin has three main layers, with the middle made up of elastic collagen fibers. The surrounding outside is made up of flattened cells that forms a waterproof barrier. Because of this durability, it takes very traumatic, extenuating circumstances to quickly break through every barrier and destroy life. These deaths can include falling from a great height, violent plane, car, and motorcycle crashes, or even a submarine implosion. Dying this way does not ensure that it will be instant. In fact, most aren't. A submarine implosion is the only death with a 100% probability of dying instantly, followed second by a high-altitude plane crash. It was previously believed that a bullet to the heart was an instant death, but this was debunked by a willing death row inmate that underwent an experiment at his execution. You can find out more about this experiment in my firing squad video. I have personally only come across around 8 autopsy reports of people that died immediately, and 7 of them were aircraft disasters. All sustained catastrophic injuries to two or more vital organs including the brain, more specifically the brain stem. Four of them sustained at least partial decapitation, with one being an internal decapitation and three being cleanly severed. 
The damage to the brain and brainstem were the primary killers in all, but every single one sustained other injuries that would have claimed their life in seconds had their brains been spared. All seven individuals were clinically dead before any physical stimuli could be processed. As hard as it is to wrap your mind around, they did not feel any part of their deaths. That being said, they were not all immune to emotional hardship. Many people would classify fear and panic as a type of discomfort. An autopsy exam cannot speak to whether or not they saw their death coming. For a little perspective, I'm going to give you an example of an instant death. I'm going to explain what would happen to the body and how it might feel. They never knew what hit them is a phrase thrown around often when discussing submersible implosions, but that's not always true. Most of these crafts are outfitted with sensors to warn of lurking dangers, and sometimes the stressor itself clues people on board into what is about to happen. If there's an electrical failure of some kind, for instance, moves must be made to avoid plummeting quickly towards crushing depths, and if those moves fail, all that they can do is marinate in impending doom. It is now widely believed that at least some occupants on the Titan knew that they were inevitably going to meet a quick and violent end for between 48 and 71 seconds. When you try to imagine the panic, imagine it as frigid and pitch black with the other occupants toppling onto you. That's likely what happened when they began plunging vertically void of power. For every 33 feet that you dive straight down in the ocean, the surrounding weight pressing on your every inch increases by 15 pounds. A shark can inflict over 4,000 pounds of pressure with its bite, but at the depths where the Titan plummeted, it's 6,000 pounds, and that's per square inch. So when an implosion occurs at those depths, it has a 100% fatality rate, and all of the soft tissue, organs, and bone will be obliterated in milliseconds. For an idea of the devastation, a large chunk of your actual cells will burst. It's dark, but you will actually burst. Your blood, guts, and waste will explode into the bitter cold water like a human firework. Around that same time, the hydrocarbon vapors that existed inside of the sub will ignite into a mighty explosion that will shoot your liquefied remains even farther out. The only misery suffered will be the panic pre-implosion, because your brain needs a longer span of time to process painful stimuli. This is about as instant as a death can get. If you have ever gotten a really nasty burner cut, you may or may not have noticed that the pain did not hit instantly. It probably took a few moments to strike, and even then, it didn't start out at 100%. It slowly grew and grew in strength before finally reaching a crescendo. If you have gotten a more severe injury, it may have taken even longer to fully reach its peak. First of all, painful stimuli takes time to be processed. It's believed that it can take around 400 to 500 milliseconds for our brainstem to process a signal. It can take up to 1,000 milliseconds for the more intense sensations to be felt. Our body also releases its own chemicals in reaction to the trauma that acts as an analgesic to dull the sensations. These are called catecholamines, with epinephrine, also known as adrenaline, being the most potent. In addition to this, it can take anywhere from seconds to hours for inflammation to form in reaction to the injury. The inflammation is responsible for increasing the pain and pressure sensations. This help is temporary. It can dull sensations for as short as minutes or as long as hours depending on the level and type of trauma. That buys you time to get medical attention if it's a survivable injury. On the flip side, if it's not and it is the injury that will lead to your death, these processes will help shield you from feeling the worst of it. This isn't to say that there will be no pain, but at least you'll have a little bit of help. There are countless sensations that a human is capable of experiencing in death. After all, we don't just have our five main senses. There are up to 23 in total, including our vestibular sense, which is responsible for our balance or lack thereof, we have our sense that can detect external temperature, and of course, nociception, which detects painful stimuli. There are also a number of types of pain that we can experience. We have two main types, nociceptive and neuropathic. Nociceptive pain is a result of damage and inflammation to our tissue. It can cause a wide range of severity and is often described as jarring, sharp, pricking, or even a dull ache. Neuropathic pain is a result of damage to the nervous system. This has been described as a sudden stinging or even an electrical burst. It can be accompanied by other strange sensations like pins and needles, numbness, or even a feeling of wetness on the skin. It's common to experience both types at once, especially in situations like sharp force injuries, blunt force trauma, crushing injuries, or even severe infection. 
Within these two main types, there are subtypes like somatic and visceral pain. Somatic pain is specific to your skin, muscles, and soft tissue and is often localized to the site of the injury. It can be classified as cramping, achy, gnawing, or throbbing. Visceral pain is specific to damage within your internal organs. It can present as a dull ache or up to an immense pressure and squeezing. If your abdominal organs are affected, you might even experience the sensation of having to defecate. This happens when the inflammation irritates surrounding nerves, causing a misinterpretation of the signal. Each type of pain can range in severity from an annoyance all the way up to a 10 on the pain scale. It's dependent on the level and type of damage. Beyond pain, there are other sensations that can come in death that would be classified as discomfort. Panic seems like the most obvious one. Panic can come from both external causes and from inside of you. Of course, if you are on board a soon-to-be crashing plane, you are going to be experiencing terror. But if something is triggering a shortage of oxygen, you will be experiencing panic on a physiological level as well. For one thing, your system will be flooded with stress hormones, which can greatly increase anxiety levels. For another, carbon dioxide is building up in your blood, which induces a sense of impending doom. If levels get high enough, it can trigger symptoms of suffocation, which are panic-inducing in their own right. Dizziness and nausea are also sensations that can be common in death. These can be triggered by an array of issues like lack of oxygen, blood loss, shock, or brain trauma. Tachycardia, a rapid and sometimes irregular heartbeat, can also induce uncomfortable sensations. As a person born with an electrical issue with my heart, WPW, I can personally describe this one. For me, it feels distinctly like I'm going to vomit up my heart. It's as if it's violently seizing and crawling up my esophagus. Others have described it as pounding or flipping in their chest and throat. There are also specific causes of death that can trigger situations which will intensify symptoms. For instance, in drowning deaths, your brain will eventually trigger an involuntary breath. There is no stopping it. The rise in carbon dioxide in your blood is the culprit. It occurs on average 87 seconds after the oxygen is cut off. This will intensify the burning in your nose, throat, and chest. It will intensify the panic. Eventually, it will intensify the exhaustion as your life begins to fade. That involuntary breath is often the beginning of the end, and loss of consciousness typically comes within 30 to 60 seconds of it occurring. When your time comes, you might experience all of these sensations or none at all. We can at least take comfort in the fact that when we are close, whatever we are feeling will be dulled. If it's a traumatic death, catecholamines will help to curb the severity and shock may keep you from feeling much at all. Once our systems begin shutting down, our nervous system will not work at full capacity, making us less of a victim to the sensations. Our body is a marvel. It knows how to keep us alive, but it also knows how to help us die when the inevitable time comes. 